Ever since Microsoft bought up Bethesda, they've been ordained to some sort of golden cow status. It seems like no matter what they release, everything gets treated like it's the second coming of Jesus. And to be fair, this comes as no surprise, as most of the games that they have produced have been pretty phenomenal. Anyway, today I want to talk about Arcane Studios, who more specifically get published through Bethesda, and I'm going to talk about Redfall. Anyway, for all those who want a little bit of a memory recap or just don't know what Redfall is, back a little while during the Xbox showcase, they announced a brand new vampire hunting style game. There wasn't any gameplay to have a look, but there was enough of a trailer to get a rough idea of how the game was going to work, and there was lots of speculation spawned out of this. What we do know about Redfall so far is it's going to be open world, it's an action first person shooter is going to be both single player and multiplayer and you can choose between four playable characters with their own unique abilities and it doesn't take too much of a leap to realize this begins to sound a little bit like left for dead but with vampires and this for the most part was okay with the community left for dead is a much beloved series by many people and with the whole epidemic crisis people are looking for more alternatives to play with their friends over the internet so so far there haven't been any details on the game whatsoever until today when there was a massive dump of leaked images of which we can go through and pick apart. So these images were leaked on Twitter from an alpha test so it is still early days but you get a rough feel of what the game's going for and I think there's some stuff that we can get excited about. So there's some stuff that we can check off already. It is first person, it is open world, it has a slightly cartoonish 3D world feel to it and there's been a pretty accurate description of it basically saying that it feels like it's got the same visualisation of Borderlands just without the cell shading. In terms of other obvious boring stuff to get out of the way, so it's already been confirmed that you can host lobbies. There is a progression system so you can level up your characters and I presume to unlock further abilities down the line. And to not much surprise there is also an item shop where you can buy various goodies from. Now in terms of slightly more interesting things, so in the UI it is made up of four core components. We've got a map nav bar at the top where it shows your missions and I presume being an open world there will be some traping to run around the whole game. So in terms of what your character can do and holding on to various weapons, it looks like you can carry three weapons at any given time. If you have a look at the weapon icon, you can see a one, two and three there and it looks like these are things that you switch between. I don't know if they are related to a specific type, so maybe one is for light, two is for medium and three is for heavy, but I have seen a mixture in all three slots. Additionally, there is Z and X for different functionality, and these look to be your special abilities on your character. I have seen a crow ability, which I have no idea what it does. There's also a crossbow, which I've seen, and also an ability which looks like it might be some sort of stealth. In all the screenshots, there's also a locked ability as well, which looks like it might be some sort of ultimate that your character can use. So as we already identified, this is feeling much more like a gaming as a service project with unique heroes that you can level up and they can all do different things, very much similar to how Borderland works. And to be fair, I'm completely okay with this. I absolutely love the Borderland series. I love ARPGs. I'd love to see more looter shooters. Destiny is a fantastic game, but I would love to see a more diversity in the whole genre. And while there's been attempts in the past, nothing seems to have really hit that nail on the head. In terms of messages directly from the horse's mouth, the original person who leaked this said the following. Someone asked on Reddit, so a non cell shaded arcane developed Borderlands with vampires? I'm honestly sold on this game if that's the case. I thought it was just going to be Left 4 Dead style game. And the reply was, essentially, that's the game, yes. The next statement is, the heroes have unique abilities which are reminiscent of those found in games like Dishonored, beyond that it's closer to Borderlands style looter shooter. It's an open world, hero based looter shooter with co-op and solo play with various forms of missions around the world as well as fast travel and safe houses, very Borderland-esque. So there we have it, yeah, a Borderlands style game. I'm really, really excited for this. It sounds absolutely awesome. In some ways, it is a little bit sad that this came through a leak, but I am certainly excited for this and it hasn't dampened my ambition to buy this game and play it with my friends. I also like the fact that it is a little bit more fantasy-esque in its stylism versus games like Left 4 Dead, where you are essentially fighting zombie-like creatures with very real modern day weapons. And here you've got a whole variety of tools. You've got guns that fire UV and all sorts of weird and wonderful things, which in my opinion is always a plus thing because it revs up the imagination and just is a little bit different from the norm and just adds a certain level of fun and flavor to a game. 
I really like the big bright bold colors. I think the visuals were very good. If this is an alpha, they're doing a fantastic job with it so far. In terms of just some other minor things as well, it looks like you've got varying degrees on the weapons. So they have different coloring representative of their kind of level. So there's a golden weapon, which I'm presuming is like some sort of artifact style weapon. You also have the option to scrap guns as well, which I guess is the currency to buy more of them or maybe mod them later down the line. And the weapons also have additional perks on them as well. So for example, there's one called the UV Beam MO1. And these are things like additional charge capacity, increased accuracy while moving, increased petrification speed. But yeah, there we have it, a rather small but exciting update for the brand new game. There's still a lot we don't know about it. And I think for these type of games, the late game is really, really important because once you get to that end result, how does the gameplay loop keep going? Will there be bosses and raids? Will there be replayability? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see until then. It's just a load of speculation. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a subscribe. I'll be back with more news and updates soon. But for now, just stay healthy and keep having fun.